Welcome to Bit by Bit, a series where we highlight one thing you can do to optimize and potentially run a bit better in Google Cloud. Today's topic, optimizing to start workloads fast. In GKE, the faster containers in a pod can start, the faster your workloads can carry out whatever it is they're meant to do. Using image streaming in GKE standard, you can get containers up and running faster in your GKE clusters. So let's get to it. In this demo, we're going to compare the speed of deploying the same two-tier app to two different GKE clusters. One is called Utah A with image streaming enabled, and the other cluster is called Utah B without image streaming enabled, and they're both in US West 3. The image streaming helps us start our workloads faster because it signals for GKE to use a remote file system as a root file system for our containers. And this basically means that containers can start well before the full image is downloaded to the node. Uh, and it basically streams in data from this remote file system as needed. Now each cluster here has zero nodes because we want to ensure our demo environment is clean and so that we're not taking advantage of any locally cached uh, container images. Uh, so let's scale both of these clusters up to three nodes. And because these nodes are new, they're gonna mimic the behavior you might see when auto-scaling, an event in which it's critical that workloads start as fast as possible. And with those nodes now created, let's see what else our demo environment consists of. For each cluster, we already have a pre-created service type load balancer uh, with an external IP. And right now, these load balancers are sending traffic to nothing, but they will send traffic to our two-tier apps once they're deployed. And I wanted to have them ready so that the time it takes to create fresh load balancers isn't accounted for when measuring the time it takes for our workloads to be ready. And this is for many reasons, sometimes workloads don't need load balancers. And often, you know, cases of auto-scaling, load balancers will already exist. Uh, so we don't want to measure that today. And now let's take a look at our container images uh, that we're going to deploy for our two-tier app uh, that are stored in Artifact Registry. And now for image streaming to actually work, uh, the container images that you deploy uh, must be stored in Artifact Registry, and the repo that they're in must be in the same region of your GKE clusters. Or in the case of multi-region repos, um, the region in which your GKE cluster is must be included. And we'll include a link uh, to all other eligibility requirements uh, in the description below. Um, but in our two-tier app, we can see that there are three container images, one for the front end, one for the database, and one for the database follower. Now, out of the three of these images, uh, the front end uh, or app image is, is the worst offender in terms of the size, coming in at roughly 300 megabytes. And we should see a significant improvement in pulling this uh, with image streaming versus without, and of course, the larger the image, uh, the better performance gain we'll see. Now, without further ado, let's see all of this in action. So we can see here, we have our app manifest and the two services that we already pre-created. In the top right pane here, we're going to run a while loop and issue requests to the load balancer uh, for the cluster with image streaming enabled. And then in the bottom right pane here, we're going to issue requests to the load balancer uh, without image streaming enabled. And so we're getting a 000, zero, zero back as our connection is being refused by both load balancers. And when our two-tier apps have successfully started, we should see a 200 for our HTTP code, which means that our app is successfully serving requests. So we're gonna deploy the same app manifest to both Utah A and to Utah B. We're gonna watch which clusters two-tier app starts up first and gives us our 200. And as expected, our top right pane has gotten 200s first, uh, which means that our app is successfully serving the requests uh, in the cluster uh, with image streaming enabled. And now almost 20 seconds later, our app is successfully serving in the cluster without image streaming enabled. And so we can get our pods and let's take a look at the details in our front end pod uh, to verify that this uh, time difference came from the container image pull time. So if we look at the front end pods from the cluster without image streaming, we can see it took roughly 24 seconds to pull the container image. Now, if we switch kube context over to our Utah A cluster and we get our pods, we can grab details from one of the front end pods. And this is the cluster with image streaming. Run the same describe command. And we can see that this container image took a shade under three seconds to pull, which is why our app in this cluster started up so much faster. Now, the best part about GKE image streaming is that it's a turnkey feature that can be enabled in your cluster via the console, G Cloud, or in your infrastructure as code. 
And as we can see here, uh, we can use the console to update our Utah B cluster to also have image streaming enabled. Using image streaming in GKE helps you deploy faster, auto scale faster, all because your workloads can start faster. As always, you can learn more in the links in the description below, and we'll see you in a bit.